Hi Thumos and welcome back. Hope you guys are having an amazing freaking day. Now I'm going to tell you straight up, this video is going to be about a video game called Elden Ring that I am a enjoyer of. I'm a base Elden Ring enjoyer. And I'm not going to talk about really anything particular, just kind of what comes to my mind about this amazing game. Now, if you're here because you want some quick tips, you want me to get to the point, I'm not your guy. So I suggest that you leave this video. But if you are an enjoyer of based Souls-like games, then I recommend that you hang around. Maybe even pop in Elden Ring, or Bloodborne, or Dark Souls, perhaps Sekiro, and listen to what I've learned while playing Elden Ring. Now this game has been amazing. First off, I got started with the Soulsborne games when I started playing Bloodborne. It was recommended to me online, you know, I watched some videos, and I tried it, and I absolutely hated it at first. Like, like I really was like, F this game, it's way too hard. I do not want to play this game. It's not fun, right? It's not fun. Lo and behold, I had heard that it was so good. So, you know, I decided, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna try this, give it a little bit more of a chance. So I played it. And what I realized is this is one of the guess, best games I've ever played in my entire life. Bloodborne was insane, dude. Like, seriously, if you get the chance to play Bloodborne, you haven't already, it is an insane masterpiece. I mean, you start out as a character in this world that is so dark and just overwhelming. Like, you get hit once and you're dead. And it's so infuriating and frustrating. You're like, what the heck? This is stupid. Whenever you get a bunch of, uh, you know, your your monies, your, your resources of the game. I forgot what they're called. Blood Echoes. You get those, you, you die, you lose them. And you got to go and try to retrie retrieve them. But then if you die, you lose them all. So, you start out completely nothing, in the belly of a beast, dark, you're, we you're the weakest one in the world. Then you start playing, and you get a little competence, and you, you level up, you grind a bit, you start to get the hang of the controls, the way the patterns are, the way the, the enemies move. And then what ends up happening, and I don't want to spoil it, but towards the very middle of the game, things start to get weird, bro. Very weird. HP Lovecraft, Z uh, uh, Cthulhu, cosmic horror type weird. And when I discovered this, because I thought the game was just, you know, had these um, horrible creatures, but it's all kind of within this realm, this universe that I can kind of wrap my head around. But then you get to there, and it's like mind blown, like mind shattering story, amazing. If, if you play, you know, you want to play an amazing game that sticks with you. And actually, what I found from these Souls games and why I appreciate them so much is they have a lot to give to you. A lot of games requ require energy and they take from you. You got to grind like these tasks that you don't want to do. I think this is the problem with modern world, open world gaming. Um, you just don't want to do this kind of stuff, right? It's, it becomes a, a like a boring. It's just boring. Souls games, man, it makes you curious. It's a it's a world that doesn't tell you what what you got to do. It doesn't tell you. In all the games I played, um, Bloodborne, I played Dark Souls One, and I've played now Elden Ring. I'm still playing Elden Ring. Just beat the third boss. There's no story. It doesn't even tell you, and that's frustrating at first. But that's like life. And and when you go into this world, you have no idea what to do. You just got you know your little rink and dink base character that gets dumped on life just takes a shit on you when you're just starting out you're trying to get better but you have these setbacks and setbacks you keep dying in the game you just keep trying and you start to piece things together you start to understand the lore and it's the curiosity in these games that sucks you in what's lying over here what's in that chest over here who is this guy is he good or is he bad was it why is he talking why does he want me to talk to him why does he want me to do this favor sometimes you know, F this guy, boom, he's dead. I don't even want to deal with these NPCs sometimes. Get them out of here. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to keep, stay on my way. So, I mean, th the games are incredible. And they have this sense of overcoming. One of my favorite things from the Dark Souls games 
is uh, it's one of the things the other NPC character says. I think he says, be safe, my friend. Don't you dare go hollow, right? Don't you dare go hollow. Don't let that fire inside you, that fire in the belly, that thumos, spiritedness, don't let it die. Because when you die, you become just like all these other people of the land, walking around, aimless, without ambition, without fire guiding them, without grace in their life, without hope. Don't you dare go hollow. I always remember that phrase, and I love it. And it, and it fills you with this, uh, this ambition, this desire. And so as we turn to the newest game, Elden Ring, there's a lot to do with ambition. There's a lot to do with, it's more heroic in a sense. Even when you press play on the first screen, the loading screen, you have this dramatic, intense, theatrical orchestra that is filled with this heroic music that is very unfamiliar if you're a Souls player. Because in all the other games, it was very kind of depressing, very um, dismal. You're in this dark world. In this game, there's a sense of hope and ambition. And it's it, I thought it was so cool when you face the first boss, Margit. F that guy, by the way. All right? And if you play this game and you get to Margit, tell me how your experience is. is. Your experience is. But in Margit, he says something. He says, oh, tarnished. Because you start out as this tarnished character. He says, oh, tarnished. Get rid of those foolish ambitions. The game kind of hints at that you're this person, you're this character that has ambition to overcome the odds and to become something that is that is going to impact this world around you, that is going to, to get rid of a lot of the darkness. Just get rid of these petty, these, these small ambitions of yours. All right, get rid of them. You're foolish for having these ambitions. And there's this theme of this throughout the game I've noticed so far. And I, I haven't beat it, so I don't really know where, what's happening, what's going on. I'm still kind of clueless. But I thought that was so cool. And how it, that ambition, that, that fire in the belly, man, is such a key to masculinity. It is, it is literally testosterone, right? It is The high thumos can be associated with high testosterone. You need to have a character that is not limping around, tired all the time, lethargic, and you know just already depressed you have to have a heroic idea that you can go out you can set out into these the lands between and just conquer whatever is thrown at you even if it's hard even if it's difficult you can face the bosses you can you can level up you can grind if necessary you can go off on side quests if you need to you can always come back and face the bosses and get to the next point the next side of grace and complete your goals have wins in life that is so crucial man you don't want to go hollow don't you dare go hollow man don't you dare lose that thumos because it's very difficult man it's very, the mindset should be guarded at all costs it says in the bible be careful you know it doesn't say this in the bible i don't think it does it's a song though that i heard in, in uh, sunday school we'd always sing it maybe there is a verse but it goes like this be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Right? Um, be careful, little feet, where you go. You want to be careful. You want to be careful not to, to get jaded towards life. And so that's a, that's a big thing. And that, that's a theme in the game. You see a lot of people complaining about this game. F, this game is too hard. There should be an easy mode. There's no easy mode, dude. There's no easy mode in life. And I love this game because it parallels life. There's no easy mode. There's no direction. There's no, you know, there's sort of a story you can create. There's, people have different endings in this game. People take what they want from the game. There's no easy mode though, bro. There's no direction. You know, you don't really, there's no guy that you meet, a mentor waiting like the classic hero's journey, Joseph Campbell's hero's monomyth. There's none of that. There's, this isn't Lord of the Rings, right? You don't meet Gandalf and have this powerful wizard. Okay, but it's not easy, and so you got to make a, a pact with yourself, and you got to coach yourself. You got to be your own friend. You got to be there for yourself in times of need, and you got to be able to to work your way out of this uh, depressive nihilistic mindset. That's the first key, right? That's the first key. The next thing I would like to talk about is 
you know, so you're starting the game and you go and you, you land at this side of grace, it's called. It's the, the grace guides your character, the tarnished, they're called. It, it guides you, kind of hints at you with this beam of light where you're supposed to be going. In the first side of grace, you get to talk to this girl. I think her name is Melanie. You, you rarely see her. I've seen her like twice. This girl is like worse than a, you know, a girlfriend. This girl is going, she's just not responding to text. Me Melanie gives you a horse called Torrent, right? He's your, he's your horse. He helps you get around this huge, massive world. First thing, get a damn horse, right? Get yourself a horse. Get yourself a vehicle. Get yourself a vehicle without a vehicle, without transportation. It's so damn hard. I'm going to be very brisk on this point, but I remember car trouble being so bloody annoying and an impediment to furthering myself and to actually just just like the video game to going around the world I, I couldn't go to the gym right I was walking to the gym at a point I was had to walk and go get groceries and bring them back I was so limited couldn't can't go and take a girl out I have no car right you want to start in the very beginning you want to get some basic resources you want to have a car you want to have torrent you want to have your horse your vehicle and without that it's very difficult, but with it, it opens up new possibilities. For me, my very first car was a green Mercury Mystique. I think I paid less than two grand. I saved up a bit of money, and I, and I had that car. And you don't need a nice car. You just need wheels, baby. You need something to get you from point A to point B. Doesn't matter where, what the world tells you. It's all a status game. Just when you're starting out, get a ride. That's all you need. You need a car. Um, something cheap. If you can take the bus, that's fine. Just figure out the logistics. So first car, you know, less than two grand, running into the crown. Um, I had a few, several cars. I should have never got the Mini Cooper. I have Mini Cooper in my old videos. Should have never got that thing because I let go of my Honda Civic, which is an amazing car. A little side note, Honda Civic, Toyota, great cars. Will last you forever. Honda, Toyota, fantastic vehicles. So, you know, and then, and then at my old place, this was a couple years back, I talked to my landlord. I'm like, you know, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a car. I had to trade the Mini in. So $800. He said $1,200. I said, I'll give you eight today. Sold. Driving around another Mercury. Actually, no, it was an Infinity. It was an Infinity J30, I believe. Old. 1994. I look like a, I look like, I look daddy as hell, man, in this whip. The last one on the road. It looked like a freaking roach. If you imagine a, if a roach could transform into a car, that's how it looked. I was driving around a roach on the road. But, uh, you know, it was it was nice. It was a nice little whip for me at the time. And now I have a, um, a 2010 Subaru Impreza. Saved up. Went on Craigslist. Bought it. Boom. No payments. Nothing. That's not always the best option. I'm not here to tell you about that right now. Just, uh... Don't go and spend a fortune on a car because that thing loses value immediately. The next thing. In the game, right? I can't believe this, guys. This is so foolish of me. There's a crafting system. Literally, you talk to the first NPC sales guy and he gives you a crafting book that you can buy. You can buy the crafting book. I didn't buy it. I've been going through the whole game without crafting anything useful supplies that help you in times of need. There is a correct way to play this game that will make your interactions with enemies and bosses 100 times easier. You can use, you know, you can put a damn electricity on your sword. You can put fire on your sword. You can um, level up your flasks. It's pretty intricate. There's some intricacies that can completely go over your head if you're not paying attention. Well, guess what? I'm that guy and I get smash for it in the game if you are, are a creative type and and you're all about the art it's very easy to focus on practical solutions that are going to enhance your life further a lot of artists only focus on the art and they think that everything will fall into place trust me you have to acknowledge your weakness you have to acknowledge your the, the places in your life that you're weak you're not able to do everything alone Sometimes you need to buy that damn craft book to craft items from that NPC and stop being stingy. Stop being, oh, I'm going to do this all alone. There's no way. No one, no one's 
like that's for the outliers, man. Most people have someone that can fill in the gaps where they're weak and you fill in theirs and you work together. You need to be able to think that there are some things that you need to set up. Like right now, I'm having a guy help me build a website because I kind of want to remove myself from the equation of, of people joining my men's community, the high thing men's community. If say I give you a, uh, a card and then you give that card to a friend, come join our group. They don't have to know me. You can sell it for me. They go to this website, takes my face out of it. You don't have to know me through YouTube. So there's, there's things that you have to like, you know, if you're trying to make a YouTube channel, don't just go and, and oh, I'm an artist. I'm just going to create and throw it up. Be wise, right? I got to make certain thumbnails. You know, when you're first getting started, certain thumbnails. How do I capture attention? What's a good title that will possibly rank in YouTube's algorithm? In the Google as Google SEO so there's a there's a lot of people that just think it's all about the art and they neglect all of these other correct ways practical guides to play in the game who has that information other people who can help you other people it's not all within like the new age people and it's not all within that's BS it's not you don't know how to do everything you need other people to show you the way so so just realize that because you will be spinning your wheels for a long time. That w that's a huge lesson for me. I'm, I'm going to breeze over it, but that's a huge lesson, man. Craft. Like, like you, there's other skills, and you're weak at them. And people need to help you with those skills. People need to tell you. Watch a video. Watch a guide. You know, There's a wiki for Elden Ring. Well, there's also tons of people that know other things that you don't know. Different resources that are available to you. The next thing. Listen, Elden Ring is the biggest Souls world of all time. This world is almost too freaking big, and I haven't even been across it all. When you first start, you see kind of an outline of what the map looks like. You're like, this is big. This is a big world. But then you go further, and it opens up, and it's, it gets even gr more grandiose. Then you realize there's actually underground world. And then on top of that, there's secret places and secret worlds and secret castles, it's too freaking big, bro. It's way too big. Okay, seriously, I almost put the game down because it was just too big. Here's what I did. I realized that there's also sites of grace that sort of point you to where you need to go to progress in the game. Now, if I didn't have those, I would just be running around like a chicken with his head cut off trying to look for clues, doing all these different side quests, stringing myself out, wasting energy, wasting time, and being like, uh, what the hell? I'm trying to improve my character. I'm always trying to improve. I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to be disciplined all the time. I'm trying to, you know, level up. I'm trying to, you know, freaking get a new outfit and stuff like that. Dude, the world is too big. You can only focus on so many things. So you need to manage your energy. Now, I think that's what makes this world, this game, so amazing. Because there's so much to do, right? There's so much to explore, so much to be curious about. But there's a very, very uh, piece of wisdom here, I believe, that parallels real life. You have to stay focused and actually progress, okay? Y you have to progress. And if you're not progressing, you're probably going off of the path of progression. Too many side quests. Way too many side quests, optional side quests that you don't need. This is key. In in Elden Ring, there's these sites of grace. You go there, you usually get it after you beat a boss, after you, uh, it's a rest point, and it shows you where you need to go. Now, sometimes you do, you do need to go level up because the way that this game's set up is you can't just keep going forward and keep progressing. No, that life doesn't let you do that. This game doesn't let you do that. The universe gives you exactly what you need at the time that you need it. If you want a million dollars, you're probably not the type of guy that can make a million dollars. If you want this and that and that hot girl and that wife, you know, all the basic stuff that everyone says they want, but they don't want to become that type of person who deserves those things, that can actually earn those things, that's when you need to go off you need to do some side quests. You need to level up a bit, all right? You need to hit the gym. You need better armor, dude. You need better armor because you're a weak boy. You're a wretch in the game. 
One hit, you're done. Get some armor on you. Bulk up a little bit. Get strong. Get some, get some, a better outfit. You know, feel good as a character. You can't be running around in your underwear. Who's going to respect you? Nobody. You got to, you got to get yourself a horse. You got to get yourself, you know, a, a brand new weapon. You need a brand new weapon. And so the game puts these kind of, they're kind of checkpoints. You know, it's like, you know, I can't beat this guy. I had to do it with Margaret. I, I went into Margaret at like level eight. I beelined it. As soon as I got out there, I'd be like, I'm like, yeah, I'm going in. I'm, I'm, this game's easy. I'm going to progress. Here I go. You know, I'm swinging around. I'm swinging around right to the castle. Oh, what a beautiful castle. And I go in. Let's go. First boss. I thought I was all the, you know, I thought I was the hot. I thought I was a hot dog, man. I thought I was big stuff, big money. Go in there and just wham. Get rid of these foolish ambitions, idiot. You know, no. Then I go back, find out how to grind. For me, in my life, my market was my market was getting my own place when my parents died seriously getting um getting my own place after my parents died i was living with a roommate shitty roommates i'm probably a shitty roommate too can't can't put all the you know i take responsibility i was then living with someone else and, and just like no peace no springboard for life that was my market. So what did I have to do? I had to leave and I had to go grind. So what did I do? I got three jobs. I told you guys this a lot. I'll say it again. Bartending, cleaning churches and apartments in the morning. And then I worked a security job, night shift. I did this for about two years. That was my market. And I had to grind. And I was tired. But let me tell you, when I got that first place, it's actually where I started making YouTube videos. Right? That, that was my launch pad. That was where, okay, I got a car now. All right, now I have a, an area that I can occupy. I can actually dominate in this realm. I, was, I had to actually stop worrying about everything and focus on a few things. I knew my mission. I had to do, I had to get my own place. I was forced to. Now, a lot of times you don't, you're not forced to, right? For me, I was forced to. And, and it was a big shift because it gave me autonomy. It gave me, you know, I was a sovereign individual. I was a man now. I had my own place. I could bring a girl over. I could, I could uh, do whatever the hell I wanted. I could, I could go to the library down the street. I could go to the gym whenever the hell I wanted. I didn't have to ask permission to go in the fridge and cook myself 12 eggs. I didn't have to ask if I could use a little extra butter. Dude, I could do anything I wanted. And that was huge. It unlocked something in my mind. You're a man now. It was the initiation for me. That was my market. As I kept going, my Godric, the next boss, F that guy. You know, F you, Godric, in the creators of this game. Seriously, that dude sucked. My Godric, this this was another part. You know, I got my own place. Now what? Now I'm working a job, but I'm scraping by. Okay, you know, go off. You got to step up to responsibility. If you want to beat Godric in this game... You have to be level, dude. Or you have to just be an insane player. And I'm not an insane player. Right? I got I got Call of Duty gameplay. Uh, uh, not Souls gameplay. My Godric was stepping up to a sales job. And this was such an, an, a jump in responsibility. It was like running my own business. It was, I had to talk to people now. I had to be face-to-face, -face, so I had to be presentable. I couldn't just be in the back, you know, trying to, in the warehouse, in the pizza shop making dough. I couldn't work a night shift anymore where no one's there. No one sees you. I'm just walking around at night, you know. Little flash, little herb dirt. Nothing against that job. Very thankful. But now I was called upon to be more responsible. I had to take on more responsibility. I actually had to be useful. More useful. I had to help people buy a car that they really desired. I had to be kind of the gatekeeper, the, the bridge between them wanting a car and them actually having a car. And I had to make them happy and make sure it fit their life. That was very scary for me as, as I think I was 23. You know, very scary, man. I was 23 when this happens. I was very, like, very reluctant to do it. I'm so thankful for that, that old, you know, guy, me in, in that past, uh, that younger self, so thankful for him for stepping up, scooping his freaking nuts, taking that on. Because what happened when I, I beat this uh, metaphorical 
God, Rick, in my own life. Well, now I had more money. I had more runes, which is the currency in the game. I had more runes, and I could use that to level myself up. I actually got a better place. I moved up. I actually moved up to the to the suite <laughs> in the uh, in the in the building that I was living in. I, I started living there, and that was cool, man. And that gave me a new outlook, you know, more sun, new outlook, better view. Then I got, um, I actually got a new car. I had the money, you know, I could take my girlfriend out at the time. I could, you know, I could do whatever the hell I wanted. I had more resources, could get a better phone, could just, it, life was so much better when you had more resources. That was my Godric. And the, so since I'm on the third boss, I'll only give you one more example. The Renalia, the queen of the moon, the next one, a little bit more mystical, you know, a little bit more magical. My Renalia was... Stepping up and learning to embrace my fear of, of speaking. Not only on camera, that was that was a big one, right? I started making YouTube videos. But then I actually in the group I had to I had to speak to other men. And guys, like like you see me talking on here, it's a completely different ball game when you're talking to people right in front of you. And I had to do this. I had to do this on camera. We do live talks and I was scared and I've always been terrified of public speaking and um you know i know a lot of people are but it was something in me calling me it was like dude you have to you have to overcome this still feel nervous from time to time but now i know that i can handle it i'm leveled up enough where i can handle it but at the time it was like all right you got to get your feet wet homie you got it you got to go in and get your feet wet or you know this skill of the you imagine if you don't beat this boss what are you going to do are you just going to go and, like, that's it, give up? Like, you need to beat this boss in order to progress further. Stop doing all these side missions. Stop getting so caught up in self-improvement and um, getting bigger muscles. That's all cope. You need to first public speak. Embrace this terrifying experience and get better at it. And be willing to. And that was big, man. That was real big. You know, a couple side quests that I did along the way. I mean... You know, the working out, the body. I mean, competing in the bodybuilding shows, that was a side quest, right? Getting in getting in shape, building muscle. It's always been that. It, sometimes it's the main quest. Sometimes it's the side quest. For me, hitting 100K subs, I mean, thank you so much, guys. That was a huge side quest for me. It was a, it was a big goal, right? It was something I was chipping away on for years. And uh, another side quest, earning my blue belt in jiu-jitsu. I felt called to these. I felt called to that dungeon. You know, I felt called to explore these catacombs and these different things that were kind of... Like, hey, come and check us out. We're cool. We got we got good, uh, you know, treasure in here. And so, so I went in. You know, those are things I'm proud of. I'm glad I did it. Help me level up along the way. Meet a lot of cool people. And find this new angle, you know, with jujitsu in my life that made things fun. Made me a new bit something. Something I could have mastery over. I could see myself progressing. That was really cool, you know. And, uh, you know, that's... That's those those bosses. Who knows what lies next? I have a few ideas, you know, and I'm going to keep going. I, I urge you to do the same, to do the same. Don't just go off and explore the entire known world. Seek to dominate the world that you're in and then move forward and set goals for yourself and wins. Because when you're winning, man, dude, when you beat a boss, when I beat Margaret, fuck, you know, just like, that's it. I stood up. Yeah. You know, that's such the... In the Souls games, there's no better feeling than when you overcome a boss. You learn the patterns. You grind enough. You get the resources to get them. You play the game with enough wisdom. All right, I got to use this. I got to parry now. I got to I gotta use a certain um, um, you know, sword. I got my armor leveled up. I'm going in there. I'm dodging. I'm weaving. I'm rolling. My stamina's up. My vigor. My mind. My intellect. F mages. If you're playing the game as a mage, you're cheating. You're a bitch. All right, stop playing as a mage. Play. Go in there. Got my berserk gut sword. Boom. And, and I'm telling you, there's no greater feeling. You got to win. And if you're not winning, if you, then just go back to the drawing board and do better. Because without winning, without actually seeing you progressing, dude, why do you need energy? You're just going to sit there. You're going to mope around the world. You might eventually go hollow. Don't you dare go hollow. All right? Um, you know, that's all I'm saying. That's all. I don't know, man. I, this is a great game. If you play another game, if I was to play one more game for the rest of my life, I'd probably make it Elden Ring. It's that good. I really urge you, if you like games, I know I should in the past, get rid of your PS4. I don't care. I love this game. It, and, and it's a work of art. It really is probably the best game ever created. 
and I'm still exploring, I'm still having fun. Um, I think it fills you with a lot of, lot of uh, hope and ambition. Seriously, you can see yourself in that character in this world that is kind of completely meaningless. It's kind of nihilistic, kind of dreadful, but also beautiful. And you can overcome. You can overcome. That's all it is. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know how you're enjoying Elden Ring. And uh, if you liked it, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you soon. Guys, if you need anything from me, please shoot me a message. I read the comments. If you're dealing with anything, listen, you got the boys here. The boys are here. We're going into a new month. We got the we got a, our High Thumos men's community. We got some great things coming. I look forward to talking with you all, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Peace.